myself, I just recently, two, year, two weeks ago, got a doctor's signature, so I don't even have a license yet. I just have an MMPR document signed. In my case, I didn't claim financial damages because I don't already have a girl for my personal self, and I don't already have anything in storage that I'm well, claiming like damages from. Lapse is what I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, so the I same thing, like if you had a, a license lapse in, say, you know, January, December, you know, yes. you can make the argument that it, it, you obviously didn't renew it because you couldn't. And yeah. so now you've got a signature under an MMP, MMPR yeah, document or something like that. You, you can still make the same claim. You're still in the exact same position. Um, just a second. And the only other thing I'm suggesting is that if you have a designated grower, there's been a lot of questions about that. Um, there's a section where you can just make note of, of what your license authorization number is and your grams per day storage and all that. I'm just encouraging people to put a second uh, line and put a star and note that they have a designated grower and put the name of their designated grower. Just to bring it to the court's attention, uh, if and when they do make a ruling, that perhaps they'll be needing to make a, an exemption from the CDSA for that designated grower as well. Are you recommending that we get an MMPR now, even if our old license has lapsed? Um, if you don't have a doctor's signature of some sort that's current, uh, and you have an opportunity to do so, then I always encourage that because that signature is still, as much as I don't uh, believe it to be necessary to be constitutional, the courts are still maintaining that that is the gatekeeper between you and the legal use of cannabis. And so we have a ruling. You don't have to buy the crash. No, no. Just get the signature. Just get the signature. You're talking about the signature of the So if you're going to. No, you don't need a copy of your Health Canada license um, for this at all. Um, you don't need to photocopy your license or you don't need any medical paperwork. When you sign that affidavit in front of a lawyer, uh, testing that you have a license for this amount and this is your authorization number, that is gold. I mean, if you're lying, you, you could be in serious trouble. As well as your your application to the doctor, the B form. Oh yeah, always keep it off. Get the doctor to raise a statement saying that he approves you using it. Yeah. It's more directive and it's more professional. Yeah, for sure. It'll expire on March 31st. This is all going to send to somebody here. What happens if you have a special discount that you prefer? So with the same corporation. So with the statement of claim, we, yeah, it's still the exact same thing. Like, if you wanted to fill this out today, I can scan it and take care of all that for you so that we can get that file number of statement of claim in. And then with the record motion, I, I don't know of a tool yet where that can be filed um, non-physically. I, I know there are ways of doing it, but it's pretty complicated getting a whole other affidavit signed to say that you did mail it. And, that did. and I, I honestly, I just can't offer the advice on, on the side of physically filing. So do you think, so if you don't have an MMPR, you should go get an MMPR doctor to sign? No, what I'm saying is that if you already had an MMAR and you're sort of in this limbo right now and you don't have a license and you have a doctor that's willing to sign a new document, so you absolutely, get anytime the you can get a doctor's MMPR. signature. Would well, you realize when you sign the MMPR that you've given up your rights to grow for that are there and forever? Only when you send it into the company. Once you, you know, send it into the company. I'd advise anybody, <laughs> I'd advise anybody whose exemption has expired or is about to to get the paperwork filled up by the doctor because that... that mm -hmm. Well, the well, any kind of paperwork, it doesn't have Even to be submitted to a license producer. We've I, actually I made not. up a new form that we've sent off to the lawyers, and the lawyers' the initial response is, that's a really good fucking idea. And what it is, is your personal information at the top, with how many grams per day that your doctor is authorizing, and then tick boxes for possession, processing, or production, and then your doctor's information. Essentially what we did is we expanded the MMPR prescription to include personal production, processing, and possession based on your doctor's recommendation. Don't forget your driver's in, um, license too. What? Don't forget your driver's license in too. Uh, so we need so to fill these up and, and send them out. No. no. So what I mean? No, you would get these filled out and keep them on your possession. Yeah. And if you decide to go to the license, you're saying not. And then a cop comes in the house, you know, officially, we know because it's going to be on their own process. It's just not only on the track of your base. I understand. It's your best, so to speak. Right. Yeah. This is actually So basically, what I what I'd like to offer in terms of like my services today, I've got a, a laptop and a printer and a scanner. I'm going to set up. Excuse me. Christian, please.
So yeah, what I'm going to offer in terms of my services today, and anyone that wants help with this, um, I've printed off and photocopied a number of that last page of the statement of claim for those who want to fill it out, have me scan it, and send off that document in order to get that filed. And then if you're interested in filling out the record motion and, and talking more about that or, or getting a copy here, then we could go through that as well and, and potentially even put together a list of people that want to go down together, uh, you know, in cars of two or three or four, and then file these on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Um, so I think that's all I have to say right now in terms of an introduction or explanation and certainly and then I just want listen I'm not trying to be combative with you I'm just trying to get everybody to go right? yeah absolutely all right now and what he's saying that you are going to have to eventually sign out what he's saying about your if you're claiming monies and such and so I'm trying to all I want is you to get your your first gold stamp and then we'll this is going to be a process it's going to take two or three years this is just the beginning of, of, of 30 or 40 documents that we're all going to have to sit down and discuss and send in. We're going to do it as a group of individuals because it has to be done individually. But we can do it as a group because this is just two forms. This is going to be 40 forms, 50 forms. This is on the long haul, man. They ain't going to roll over just like that on the 18th and say, oh, there, hocus pocus, it's going to be good. This is going to be a fight. So if you're going to get in the fight, you get in the fight. You don't get in the fight to say, I give two minutes later because you're, you're going to end up hurting yourself if you do that. Because what you're doing here is you're trying to give yourself the right to grow your own medicine and have the right to have nobody come into your home and tell you you don't have that right. And that's the only thing you're trying to do here. And, and in the meantime, we have to try to keep healthy. Right? And that's all I can say. Did yeah. anyone have questions for Chris? Yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> Chris, Chris was first. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like there's anything here for somebody just off the street who wants to help this group because doesn't believe the way the government is headed. And doesn't have a license, so um, there's. If you want to apply for cannabis as preventative medicine, you can be a part of this statement of claim and motion. Isn't there's that putting box. your name out there so they, you know, now they have a registry of all the yeah. people? Yeah, yeah. 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 there you got yeah. guns. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I did. You know, Absolutely. what this whole thing has done has scared everybody underground. I think. Yeah. I know at least half a dozen people that want it to be legal, and will never go down this road. No. I don't know. I, I, I could stand in your shoes, but I've been in the position now where my fiance Jess and I were beat up by a couple of dirty cops. We were taken out to the back of a court parking lot, and I was held down in a sleeper hole while, while I watched the police. This is why your kids are getting chased away, because so, you know, adults if, are scared to stand up to them. If you want to cower and, and be afraid of putting your name on a list, I, I, I absolutely recognize that there are people that need to maintain their anonymity, and I'm, I respect that as a right and decision. I don't in any way uh, disregard someone that makes that choice. But I also recognize that throughout history, when people have come together and been willing to put their names down together, to be accounted for, that we're a lot stronger in numbers. And at a certain point, I do believe, I, I, it's sad, it's probably pretty pathetic, and maybe it's misguided, but I do believe in tentacles of democracy still left in this country. And I do believe that there's an ability to, if we actually stand up and decide to exert our rights to, to take power, that we can do that. And it's a matter of us stepping back and not exerting our right to power that has allowed them to do this in the first place. What costs more on the street, oxycotton or marijuana? What's that, sorry? What cost, what, what could you get on the street for Oxycontin compared to marijuana? I'm not really involved in Oxycontin trade, I'm not really involved in Oh, it's cheaper, is it? It's a buck of milligrams. Okay, well, I'm just saying, I could probably go to see my doctor tomorrow morning and get a license for Oxycontin, but I won't go down that road either. I don't know why you want to, it causes suffering instead of healing. Well, the thing is, is that but it's legal. But it's subsidized, so when the MMPR comes into effect and I can't get my cannabis anymore because I can't afford twelve dollars a gram, but I can have all the arms see me cotton and buy the more that I want. That's my point. Then why not trade it to a dealer for safe medicine that works to put more out onto the streets? Because I'm a prick. 
That's my point. I, don't I don't care about your kids because you don't care about me. I, I think the reason is because Peace Naturals is going to expand their $3 grand production. And so me as a dealer, I'm going to find all you people on social assistance and say, hey, you go get that $3 gram wheat, sell it to me at $4 a gram, or, and then you can go off and make your, you know, you're going to afford your, your, your monthly medicine amount because you're subsidizing your product with becoming now a, 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 a And you're also putting goddamn poison in the street. Think about what No, exactly. No, I, exactly. I'm being facetious in saying this, but I think I'm, this is I'm the model that they're trying to... I'm not talking about the way people are thinking. But, but <laughs> that's... Say for years. Canada, to speak of, for it, it's not a matter of having a part of it because it's going to be personal preference. People are going to do whatever it has to... what they have to to survive or what they think they need to do to survive. But you don't condone something like that. I don't condone it at all, but it's just a natural fact that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I would never do or know anybody who would do anything like that, but I can assure you it's going to happen. And, and for anybody that's looking at the forums and sees that it's 51 pages and says, Jesus, I can't read all that, John Jermel has a very animated, almost two-hour video where he basically reads the entire thing to you word for word. It's right there on the same form that you can download the kits from. So. If you're not interested in reading it, uh, he actually shouts at one point and makes me jump right out of my chair. So. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, pretty he's pretty ambitious. Yeah. But, uh, he's like a person. Chris, there is a, I brought a scanner with me hooked up to this, so we can, and it's on the internet, so we can do some stuff and so get some idea. Uh, if, if, if somebody's license has expired and they're doing this, um, where it put the, the last license they had in the spot, is that Okay. So maybe just make a star and put ex expired in the date that well, expired no. and then doc, um, just a renewal thing. pending or you know, whatever the situation is. Style. Don't hesitate to be a little no. bit flexible with no. that part no. of the forms if you need to, if you feel you, you should put it in Have you looked at what Russell Barth did? Yeah, there's, there's been a few patients in Ontario that have taken it a step further and said, uh, well, the MMPR is taking away my rights for like 30 or 40 years of life that I'm still expecting ahead of me, and so I'm claiming damages for the cost of my medicine for the next 40 years. So in Ontario, we're seeing multi-million dollar claims being filed. If you're willing to sign an affidavit and feel comfortable with that, I'd say go for it. They want to give me 150000 a year for my medicine. I'll pull over the next 40 years. I've seen on one of the company websites that they are pushing. You send me 150000 a month for off the street what I need. Well, veterans have already had experience success with that. I'm a veteran. I can't give anything. Oh, I, I, I should talk to you after. There's been a lot of successful veterans like this. Oh, really? Yeah, for sure. Sir, sir you, you said you were a veteran? Yes, sir. <coughs> Doctor, I'll help you. Okay. I haven't seen you for sure. Did anybody else have a question for Chris? I don't know how many people. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Terry. Uh, how's this going to affect, uh, affect the lawsuit? Because they're claiming that we're going to stay. Um, um, in fact, uh, not putting our names, and then we're putting our names out in this, then they just cross the two and say, hi, you keep your name out. Okay, so there's two things to consider. Um, the first is, is that when the Federal Crown has been communicating back and forth with, to us on these matters, they've been deleting our, our names and, and really just putting the file number and putting all of our file numbers collective. Um, and there was an issue where names were being compiled by the Crown and being used almost in a flashy sense when we were filing, and, and they were actually like kind of like using it as intimidation tactic. And I filed a letter with the Governor and Council of Atlantic Canada, uh, who's actually the one prosecuting Jess and I in our own criminal charges. Uh, they've specifically taken the head honcho in order to make sure, you know, they get the best chance of conviction possible. But I've extended a courtesy letter to him on the, on the privacy issue and made note that as long as it ceases on Monday, we won't be pursuing on a civil on a civil procedure on that matter, as we will, in order to protect the patient's identity. Okay. Yeah, they were so nice with putting your name on everyone, saying this is the drug program.